It's the A and R Room on Sway in the Morning. Ladies and gentlemen, we have your favorite producer's favorite producer, uh, a man who keeps his eye and pulse on the game as music starts to ascend to the surface and to the within the grasp of the public. Ladies and gentlemen, he's in the nooks and crannies of the world as well as the big stage, whether it's the Grammys or the VMAs. He's always there. You can find on the one and only Rich Nice. Oh, that's me. Rich Nice. <laughs> I was like, who is he talking? About. Talking about you, Rich Nice. Yeah, yeah, I'm Cutmaster. That's me, Cutmaster. Oh, okay, that's the new nickname. Cut yeah, ma- you know, Cutmaster. What's been up, Rich Nice? Oh man, developing a lot of new music for Black Music Month, which we are in right now, the beginning of. Mm-hmm. Um, there's tons of great music that we uh, uh, have released. We have some music from Reese. We have some music from um, uh, so many people. I'll put it on the Instagram. People can go check it out at A uh, and R Room uh, on Instagram and A and R Room on Twitter. And we're doing a Black Music Month event in Harlem. At a Harlem Mist on the twenty fourth. That's is. on a Monday, so we'll talk about it as we, you know. Rich nice with the radio voice, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're here to celebration today. This whole day has been a celebration. Big round of applause. Big <laughs> celebration. I saw my brother at Soundset, mm. and he and I have been communicating. Um, since the early days of his career, I remember when he first brought the Broad Shoulders Project to us back in 2015. But we met before that. The Restoration of an American Idol was another project. Be Yourself was another project. But we met before that. We met in Chicago. Yeah. And we were at a, a, a event on a, with an educational initiative called Get Schooled. Yeah. We yes. were, yeah. Yep. And, crazy. and I, was, I knew his brother because his brother had been on the show. And his brother had donated a big wad of cash to the uh, Unified School. A million dollars, right? It was a million dollars, yeah. Yeah, and this was before. This was back in the day. This was back in the day. So we've been putting in work in Chicago. They know it in the city, but, you know, yeah. And back in the day, I don't even know what year that was. That might have been 2013. 14? 14, Early 2014. 2014. If I looked at the picture and yeah. I saw what I looked like, I'd know. You would know, right? And <laughs> yeah. uh, but uh, and his brother's Chance the Rapper. Yes. Okay, and he his brother said, hey, man, it's my, my brother, and he got beats. He's an artist, and he got beats. Yeah. And, and then Chance just big brothered him and walked off. <laughs> <laughs> Which was like the nicest introduction I think Chance has ever given me to anybody. Really? Yeah, he yeah, definitely. He, he told you, I'm not going to be bringing you oh uh, yeah no you know um with chance and with me you know i think especially in the music industry with anybody that's like siblings it's it's very very rare that you see two people even um you know with solange and beyonce so shout out solange you know but like people that can actually both be successful because i think like in the world of content we were just talking about instagram mm-hmm. it's so easy to see one thing and be like i don't want to see it again mm-hmm. and even though you know I got my own story. I got my own, you know, I think there's always kind of that overbearing shade that's like, oh shit, we know what that nigga finna sound like. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) But I mean, that's also a double-edged sword because then I get to spit and they like, oh shit, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, 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 yeah. And you've been paying his dues ever since. But what I like, so. what I like about, <laughs> I saw what Chance did to you. See, I'm a younger brother, so I was kind of empathetic. Like, yo, he just big brother, Dean. But we stayed in contact, and you kept yeah. sending me music, and I was like, yo, this kid is actually nice on his yeah. own. And that was crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, and came up to the show. We put him to the test. Mm-hmm. He had to do a few fingers of death. Yeah, uh, freestyle off the top was very open and honest yeah. about who he is. He's back. The one and only Taylor Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. What up? What up? What up? What up? American Reject is his new project. It's, it's out yes, right sir. now. It's out right now everywhere, yo. Uh, so now you and Chance, was it that Chance wanted, uh, said, wanted to make sure that you carved your own route? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's crazy, and like I could look back at it now, but not really having the understanding of, because in this industry, there's so many different people that, you know, they're kind of leeches. They hop on you. They ride the bandwagon. They want to be in the same gang. They want to be your brother. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But they not really his brother. And I think there's something that he knew for me is that, first of all, Chance is a true artist. He's the biggest independent artist right now and of all time. And, you know, I think that something that he really wanted me to understand is that he loves this shit. Mm-hmm. Like, and if I don't love this shit, then I shouldn't be in it. And that was something that I had to learn to understand myself. And I had to really push through. And over those years and over that time, you know, all the amazing things, Jimmy Fallon, Good Morning America, oh. uh, Steve Colbert. What? You know, oh, did he just stun on us? All that. You know what I'm saying? When he first came up. I didn't have none of that. So <laughs> shout out to y'all, yo. And we was just in the hallway talking about it. But shout out to you for 
really loving hip hop and really being the person that I saw on TV and looked up to that was like really out here for the people and and putting people on because I was really just texting this man like yeah. sending him tracks like I'm not getting no placements I didn't have any you know rotations on the radio I don't have a record deal you know what I'm saying we independent and you brought me up here yo and yeah. you put me on I like that I remember something you said to me in the first interview anybody that's on here go back and look at it you said I like you I love you, and I'm going to follow you. Mm -hmm. And you have. You've been here everything. Me talking about my son, mm -hmm. everything. Yeah, it was such an emotional thing every time I come in here because I got so much love for y'all. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. y'all really here moving. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And making yeah. it happen. Yo, so. You made a lot of big announcements. You you came here. You made the announcement uh, about uh, your sexuality, right? Yeah, yeah. You ended up being bisexual, yeah, right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Um. You know, I had that conversation here, and I think it's still something that's so dope that y'all have those conversations yeah. to talk about because I was literally talking to somebody else the other day and they were saying that you know it's not they're not trying to be rude when they ask somebody what bisexual is that conversation just isn't open at all yeah and I was like I feel you you know what I'm saying and that's the reason why I may be yourself and that's the reason why I love coming to this show because it is a safe haven it is somewhere that we could talk and be open and freely speak our mind mm -hmm. not just as artists but as African Americans mm -hmm. and me as a young black man and I'll tell y'all right now, I went to grade school. I live in America. I live in Chicago. I never get the fucking opportunity to say what's on my chest. It's a lot of people that I know that never get the opportunity mm -hmm. to talk about dads not being their life, by being bisexual, having a kid. Like, And these are moments that we get to share on your platform. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So shout out to you. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Taylor. You keep shouting me out, man. I'm going to keep shouting you out, Joey. <laughs> 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 we going to be watching this shit on a plane. Swayla had this video everywhere, yeah, Taylor. Man. Thank you. It's going to circulate, man. I'm going to be playing bits and pieces from this interview. The little bits is like, shut out Sway. It's going to be a whole yeah, yeah, shut out Sway. Shout viral Sway. kid. Ring That's what I'm talking about, man. Let me ask you uh, from the uh, from the community that, um, that when you announced you were bisexual and then turned around and announced you were having a kid yeah. and that you're in a um, heterosexual relationship, right. did you get any backlash? Um, I think, you know, the backlash that I got was really, like, from fans that, you know, are kind of, like, crush fans. Like, uh -huh. not, like, backlash, backlash. We'll still get, you know, on the post, like, that's my baby daddy and, like, just, like, crazy shit like that. Uh -huh. But um, in what terms about from of... the LGBTQ community? So, yeah, that's what I'm talking about okay, is, like, okay. the LGBTQ community. Um, I think... As far as the LGBTQ community goes, there's like an understanding of what bisexual is because okay. it's like one of their letters. So they weren't really that confused by it. I think there were people that still, like we were talking about, haven't been so open to the conversation of what bisexual is. And then they had questions like, oh, I thought that nigga was gay. And then you'll see, <laughs> it'll be like five comments that have come under it. Like, no, he's bisexual. And, you know, honestly, I remember I said this to you one time before. That's the beauty of this whole thing for me is people just having conversations, like yeah. people yeah. just being able to converse, educating each other, you know, because very often I think systematically it's an oppressing tool to stop conversation, to make people feel isolated, to make people feel uncomfortable. Um, and I think one of the biggest, you know, I think things that I wanted to break down because I'm really from the hood is that, you know, in the hood. It's not about being gay. We all have gay cousins. We all got gay friends. We all got gay family. I think that in the world of satire, not just comically, but also musically, throughout entertainment, throughout movies, there has been a brainwashing component to make us as black people feel less comfortable as ourselves. And I've seen it growing up where I'm getting that nigga don't look at me the wrong way. I'm going to knock your ass out. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, like, but like not even on some don't look at me like on some gay shit just don't look at me at all like nigga don't talk to me like mm -hmm. that's you know like i got so many different friends like even when i walk out because i walk outside i don't have security you know what i'm saying like i still got that mentality in my head and i gotta always knock it off but that's how i grew up you know what i'm saying because we're always afraid of what we don't know and that's the same reason why when i was 14 15 today it's kids walking around with guns and you know what i'm saying because we don't know and we don't want to know you know what i'm saying we're comfortable being alive and that's all we trying to do is survive you know what i'm saying uh -huh. like that's all we trying to do is get through it every day so you know it's a beautiful thing yo yeah Ta know. taylor bennett man the american reject out now <laughs> oh, so you got the baby yes sir okay uh i met the mother yes yeah I met the mother. beautiful young lady yep uh, i know your parents 
Uh, uh-huh. Have you been pressured to get married? Um, I haven't really had the pressure. Pressure. I'm definitely going to marry her. I love her All so right. much. All right. Um, wow. That's you know, amazing. I, yeah. That's amazing. No, I'm yeah. definitely going he to marry. He just said that. Her. So yeah. another announcement. Yeah, Kayla I Moore. I remember the first time I didn't want to say her name on the show. I was like, yeah. I don't know if I'll say. Kayla. Um, you know, I love you. We definitely gonna get married. Um, you know, there's nothing that I enjoy more than waking up next to her and my son and knowing that. I'm in the right place and knowing that God, you know, got me. You know what I'm saying? Because I think that when you live inside this industry, inside this rap world, it's so many different things, materialistic things that you could be chasing, dollars, all what happens to a lot of us. And I was just saying that, you know, I was talking to Vince Staples in the airport. We were going to play golf ball. Love like, Vince. To, shout out Vince. Yeah, He's a great guy. Vince and He's very, man. very, 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 very intelligent and mm-hmm. very wise. And one thing that he said to me was like, Make sure that you live those years of your life. You getting all the stuff that you want. You playing the shows. You getting the fans. You got a kid. You got a girl. Live your life. Like, don't be out here touring 280 days of a year. You don't got to do that. You know what I'm saying? And if you do want to do that, do it because you want to do it. Don't do it because you think you need to do it because you don't need to do shit. And I think that, you know, even in terms of like me getting married, like that was something that, you know, I had to really get over is like telling myself, oh, I'm not ready yet because all of, you know, we want the the Beamers. We want the the big ass cribs. We want, you know, it it ain't like that. You know, Mm -hmm. life ain't perfect like that. It's not going to happen like that. And if it does happen like that, you probably don't want it to happen like that because you're not ready. You know what I'm saying? So for me, you know, I'm here now. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm in a position. I think that, you know, I'm just grateful that, you know, Kayla, she putting up with me right now, letting me, you know, run the sound set with you and then come yeah, here with you, yeah. go run around the world with Sway Team yeah, and yeah, shit. No, it's like we're on tour together. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Well, yeah. you know, she got uh, my baby. And, of course, you know, I get to clearly go back and do my thing and everything like that and make sure I take care of her and my son. But at the same time, you know, when you're a celebrity, when you are touring, when you want to be famous, when you're trying to, you know, it's work that I think everybody in this room knows that you got to put in. So, you know, I really just appreciate her for holding me down. And that is one of the major reasons why I'm going to marry her. <laughs> you know is, man. Taylor Bennett, man. Yeah. We're going to get into this project and just keep this conversation going. Yep, you said yep. the American Reject is uh, uh, a project that you want to unite all people who feel alienated in society. Yeah. Right. And um, I listened to the project at least three times. I My listened guy. forward to back back to four and then I just throw it in and just let it rock you know um one of the things I noticed about this project um that's probably you, you're never the same guy twice to me where you know what I mean in your yeah. projects and yeah. I, I don't Thank even you. try to guess where you're gonna go sonically right. and what you're gonna do in terms of style in terms of how you uh deliver your your lyrics um right. And in this one, you're singing and you're yeah. rapping, and you got Mr. Hudson in the, on this. So yeah. we, we just had on the show for oh, yeah. the first time. Shout out Mr. Hudson. Mr. Hudson. I'm on Mr. Hudson Project, too. So yeah. shout out to him, man. That's literally one of my biggest inspirations. Like listening to alternative music, like he, before he did Forever Young, before he made Paranoid with Kanye, he had a group and they made an album, and it was called Mr. Hudson in the Library. Mm-hmm. And it is one of the best albums ever to me and I remember when you know when I was in seventh grade you know and um I was dating you know this girl that's one of my good friends now her dad was like in the army I used to sing his songs to her when she was going to sleep um and it's just so crazy because I got the verse back 15 like I had already distributed I had already put it out he was randomly hit me up on Instagram. I was texting him. He sent me a song. I sent him a song that had an open verse. And I didn't even say, I think you would sound good on it. I was just like, what you think about this? 10 minutes later, that's how hard of a worker he is. He sent me back a version with his voice on it. And I literally could have sat in that room and cried because it was like, you know, when you work so hard, I, everybody in this room, I'm going to say it again because y'all some hard working ass people. Shout out to y'all. Y'all know how it is when you have everything set up. And, and and you want it to be perfect, and then you just get that one thing from God that just comes down. It's just like, damn, I didn't even know that it could have been all this, but it is that. Mm. Yeah. So it, it it was emotional for me, man. Like yeah. That's the song, I Miss You? Yeah, I miss you. Here sure. it is, Sway in the Morning, 888-742-3345. You want to talk with Taylor Bennett, the American reject. The song is I Miss You with Mr. Hudson. Yeah. Taylor Bennett, that song is I Miss You featuring Mr. Hudson. Totally different vibe, Rich Nice. I like it. Yeah? Yeah, because, you know, I think sometimes 
because everything so much sounds the same now and, and no cap to anybody no no diss to nobody but i think when you as an artist when you can um and you can go outside of of yourself and say i'm gonna try some of this and i'm gonna try some of that that's what makes me excited about an artist your project is like that it doesn't seem like you. you've walked like i was saying you didn't walk the same path twice on the project yeah what made you what inspired you to kind of go different directions um you know what it is um first off you know um very big rock and roll inspiration on this whole project um the cover art is inspired by Sgt. Pepper's by the Beatles album cover. Mm -hmm. um, growing up, you know, I listened to a lot of Queen. I listened to a lot of the Beatles, the Smiths, um, as well as, you know, some um, like Simon and Garfunkel and, you know, things like that. Um, and I think that with this project, something that I see that's coming present in every genre, not I guess every kind of angle of hip hop right now, whether it's Juice World, Trippy Red, um, there's a lot of not even just rock mentality it's really like rebellious mentality okay. and you know i think that for hip-hop something that i'm working on a project with a good friend of mine and what he does is he travels the world to third world countries and things like that and he sees how the hip-hop influence is pushing them to revolt and talk about things politically mm -hmm. that are happening to them as well as you know that's a lot of what we do in america and, you know, I feel like with a lot of things that I've done in terms of Be Yourself, in terms of Restoration of American Idol, in terms of Broad Shoulders, a lot of it is, you know, very, um, I think, charged with an action to be yourself, to take things into your own hands. Um, and for this project, as crazy as it sounds, I just wanted to scream. I just wanted to show people that you don't have to always have a uh, 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 um, consensus on what you're going to do. You don't always have to be 100% sure. Like, I think the best things kind of happen from clashing sounds together and trying different things out. And that's like a statement that is much larger than my project and much larger than my music. Mm -hmm. And when you look at America and we have called it a melting pot before and you see all of these different things colliding with each other, all of these different conversations, all of these different opinions that are so far from each other. And the only thing they have to do is converse. And that's how I feel as a person. Like when I see anything, like when I see everything that's going on right now with being pro-choice and people being pro-life is the conversation is lacking. And it's lacking because the people in power don't want to talk to each other. Uh. You know what I'm saying? And when I go to these music festivals, when we did Soundset last week and when I did GovBall yesterday, I tell everybody there when there's 5,000 kids at the stage, this power is bigger than this festival. Use these numbers to see political actions of things that y'all want from y'all local government. Yeah. Like, yes, we love Taylor Bennett. Yes, we love Lil Uzi Vert. Yes, we love Chance the Rapper. But we love ourselves too, yo. And I think that, you know, that's something that's been pushed so long with the idea of voting. You know, me and my brother, of course, you know, we did, we've done like parades to the polls. He was very big pushing Amar. We have a new mayor of Chicago. Shout out to that because mm -hmm. the last mayor was fucking capping on everybody. Yeah. Um, but, but. My point is, like, we've tried to touch those levels, and I think there's so many different people that are like, yo, my parents voted. I tried to vote last time. That shit ain't work. And it's like, now, what do we do? Because it's so hard for me to see, no offense to Jay-Z and Beyonce, but then be our Martin Luther King and Coretta Scott and understand that, yes, we love y'all. Yes, y'all are geniuses. But how do we take some of that fan love and put that shit towards a new president, put that shit towards local community services, put that shit towards arts and crap. Like, how do we do that shit? You know what I'm saying? Chance is, like you said, you started to show off. That was in 2014 before he had a million dollars himself. He was teaming up with people to dope millions of dollars to, you know, schools, mm -hmm. you know, like. Mm -hmm. But the logic is bigger than that. Bigger you know what I'm saying? That. And I think that that's kind of what this project means overall is that I want people to understand that we all are rejects, but we all are the same and that we can come as one force. And I want the music to bring together people that might consider themselves to be oppositions. Uh -huh. You know, I want those people because my biggest dream, I said this in my first interview, is to be doing a show to hundreds and thousands of people. And at one point, just tell everybody, look to the left and the right and see that that person that looks nothing like you is connecting with you in ways that you never thought through this music. You know what I'm saying? So 
Taylor Bennett. Hey, man, um, we got people on the phone lines, 888-742-3345. You know, growing up up in the household uh, with uh, two siblings, man, um, but we all kind of kept the t- same tax bracket, so we didn't really have no confrontations. But what is it like when your brother's rich and you're not? <laughs> um, shit, I'm rich now. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just let it, let it be known. You saw the Louis bag, you know, I'm getting to the bread. But when your brother is that insanely rich, like richer than everybody else, um, basically in the hip hop community, except for Jay-Z, clearly, um, you know, I think like when he's holding down his masters and you're seeing, you know, um, companies and things like distribution services being purely built off of that representation, all you could do is be inspired. Be inspired. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He, um, he ain't got more money than Diddy, though. By the way, no, Diddy. he don't got. Oh, he don't got more money than Diddy. Okay. I take that back. But you know what Chance does have? He has his independence. Okay. He right. doesn't right. have any joint ventures. I think Drake he doesn't might have, have any. Drake might also have more money, but he doesn't own his masters. He doesn't own his independence. He has no choice of selling his catalog if he wanted to or his publishing. Eminem also is not an independent artist. Shout out to Eminem, though. Jay-Z became a billionaire. Jay-Z did just become a billionaire, so he is definitely richer. I just showed him that on my phone. Mike Muse. He's still not independent, though. We're going to hold that. Mike Muse, talk about your money. Now you got a question for Taylor Mike. He's getting that. He's probably richer, too. Independence is the key, though. Independence is the key. Independence is the key, yo. Everybody is really running out after it now um shout out to steve stout with united masters shout out to TuneCore. shout out a lot of different distribution services also shout out apple that you know you guys are getting rid of itunes they're putting it together with apple music so um you know a lot of these third party kind of companies that used to just be in the business of providing the music and distributing the music are now getting into the game of trying to be the labels and trying to cut the deals and exclusives before you know these other people get their hands on these artists and give them either more comfortable deals or just be the people at the end of the day that's like yo, I own you. You know what I'm saying? Um, So I think the whole music world is kind of advancing in that sense. Um, So, you know, shout out to all of that that's kind of happening because, you know, independence is the key, you know, in the future. Um, One thing that I definitely got to say on your show is that something that I've thought about, and it might not be correct, it'd be a lot of people that say something to me, but there is, for me, this is my thought pattern, there is no generational wealth for African Americans. Um, You look at other ethnicities you look at other races they have different ways to make money as african americans we still don't know how to make money off i think the most productive thing not just in our culture but probably in america which is our music Uh we still don't sell our music like we still have to sign contracts we still need distributors we still need publishing and you know like like we were just talking about chance chance is a representation that we don't need that anymore Uh you know what i'm saying sway you're a representation that we don't need that anymore you're a representation that there's people that are really looking for music out here there's people that are really not just trying to hustle and grab a 999 you know album but like you say bring you something different to the table and then also like you said be independent with it run your own business Uh um when we got to meet your guy out there you know steve bladder Steve Blatter, shout out to him. You know, one of the first things that anybody always asks me is who's your manager and what's your label? And the best thing I can always say, Sway has seen me say it a hundred times, I don't have a label. You know, um, in terms of management, you know, I manage myself. My managers work for me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, but that is a beautiful thing in itself because with the knowledge and with the power to express yourself, you can make it to places like this and touch millions of people and change people's lives and, you know, control the outcome of that. So. Taylor Bennett, man, this dude, man. Ronald's on the line. He's been holding for a long time from Ohio. Up? Ronald, what up? What up, hey, Ron. Ronald? Hey, what's going on with it, bro? Hey, first I want to say real quick to you, Sway, man. Like, hey, thank you for what you do for the culture, bro. You are God in the business, and I appreciate you and love you. Thank you. I love um, you too, Ronald. So, Dig, listen, here, I'm, I'm, I'm a two-time uh, best-selling author, uh, and my books are on childhood trauma and the lasting effects of childhood trauma and mental health in the black community, right? Uh, I'm also the developer of the only, only of its kind suicide bullying app for kids. Uh, it's called Strike Back Suicide App. That's the website as well, Strike Back Suicide App. Okay. Uh, I'm in Cincinnati, Ohio, so right now I'm pushing an initiative that could be one of the biggest initiatives that the African-American community has seen in decades, and it's called the State of Emergency on Childhood Trauma with a focus on black and brown babies with PTSD, right? Okay. Black and brown babies suffer at, P- at higher levels of PTSD than soldiers. Um, and and we you know we just executed on a state level, and I'm quite sure all around the country, uh, on a state level, uh, a state of emergency and opioid crisis. When I was a kid, I knew of heroin and I knew of crack, because that's what my daddy was addicted to. I had never heard of, of opioids when I was a kid. Okay. I don't remember a, a freaking state of emergency or, on crack or heroin, but I do remember a war. Okay, a so- real-life war, you know, it's on our community called yeah. the War on Drugs 
that left a lot of victims. Okay, so let me ask you this, Ronald. Um, um, how would you like to uh, incorporate Taylor into this uh, conversation? So Taylor, I'm, 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 I'm humbly asking you. So I'm pushing an initiative right now, modeled after the state of emergency on opioids, called the state of emergency on childhood trauma. I'm trying to get Ohio to be the first state to execute a state of emergency on childhood trauma with the focus on black and brown babies with PTSD. And I have our brothers like Mark Bridge, that's from Hip Hop Period TV, uh, you know, support with this from Cincinnati, and a, a number of uh, therapists and educators. But I need platforms. I need Go brothers, ahead. man, like you, man, like your brother, that's doing that, that have major platforms because we actually want to come to Illinois. After we get this executed here, we want to bring it there. We want the focus to be on our black and brown babies the way they did this opioid okay. crisis. All right. So let me, let me ask you, um, and I'm sure you get approached. Uh, a lot yeah. because of the work you do you're going oh, to yeah. attract that kind of yeah. um, by the way Rono congratulations on all the work you're doing yeah yo shout out Thank to you, you man. man I was going to say what, man, what's your social yeah, Rono the people want to find out more about what you're doing how can they reach you uh, on, on, on IG Ronald the letter A last name is Hummins H-U-M-M-O-N-S underscore official uh, Facebook Ronald Hummins H-U-M-M-O-N-S uh, my website for uh, my suicide app is Strike Back. One word: Strike Back Suicide App. It's a it's a uh, suicide and bullying app. Okay. Strike Back Suicide App dot com. All right, so maybe uh, Ronald could reach you on social and y'all. Yeah, can definitely. Yo, make sure you hit me up, yo. Um, at Taylor Bennett at T A Y L O R B E N N E T T. Shoot me a DM. Um, as soon as I hop off here, I know it's live, so I'll check it out. Shout out to you and everything you're doing for Ohio, man. We definitely need people like you every day. You know, um, putting in that effort to make the world change. So you know, shout out to you, Ron. Had the one tour. It looked legit. Yeah, it's okay. up. It's official, Ronald. We're looking at it now, and he's also noting that June is. Uh, PTSD Awareness Month. So okay. he's official about his cause and his, all his platforms are up there on That's Instagram. Awesome. That's awesome. Okay, right? yeah, I'm going to okay. get at you, Ron. Mark in the Bay Area, what's your question or a comment? Hey, Mark. Hey, what's up, bro? Hey, how y'all doing today, man? I just wanted to say, like, honestly, after hearing the song, it's just, hello? Yeah. Yeah, after hearing the song, it's like a, a fresh, a breath air, man, like to actually hear some good music finally. Like that song, I miss you, production is just, crazy to me like it's totally dope I, i'm honestly i'm rocking with you man I'm, I'm gonna follow you on instagram and i'm gonna tell all my people about your music man man that's awesome yo thank you so much yo. i appreciate he, it he independent and his brother got millions so you need to help him out make sure yeah. you buy that <laughs> yeah. he counted his brother's millions in, he counted his brother's millions in his wealth he said i'm rich too no i'm just joking i'm Mike, getting at the bennett's we definitely coming together yeah that's you good really? are what you guys counts? going on tour yeah, um, so yeah, we're going to be hitting the road, yo. I'm super excited for that. Um, you know, I've done like my own headlining, you know, kind of sold out Lil Ya Diggs, but I haven't really gotten a chance since 2014 wow. to go on a road with, you know, like a major, major act. Um, the last joint that I did was Tory Lane. So I'm really excited. Um, me and Chan's going to be getting on the road, yo. And I think it's just, you know, like we talk, you know, this is uh, my brother. You know, we don't really get to see each other every single day anymore mm -hmm. since we, like, lived in a house and we were, like, kids. So I think it's a dope experience, clearly, to be able to be with him every day, but then also, you know, to be able to connect with the fan base, to be able to get out there, to touch new people. It's a beautiful thing, man. Um, you know, I'd rather be on tour with no one else. So, Mike so, Muse, go ahead. Yeah, when, your conversation is very really fascinating. It's very evolved. It's very nuanced. And I think it's dope. Just as you mentioned earlier about politics, you know, and getting the youth involved and engaged, politics is all about just having a conversation. And yeah. so I'm curious, though, in terms of the entrepreneurship aspect of it, that's a conversation we're having a lot right now as a nation, generational wealth, yeah. generational wealth in the black community and legacy. As millennials are one of the fastest growing populations for incoming entrepreneurs, are you also having the conversation from your platform in terms of entrepreneurship, in terms of how to get us actually own our music and yeah. our property such as you're having the conversation of politics and yeah so definitely so uh just to let you know so um my name's taylor bennett when i was 17 i formed my own llc i went downtown paid 500 dollars uh turned that into a record label um that i called tay bennett entertainment we don't have any you know uh parent investors or parent labels or anything like that um signed bianca shaw and then also zeke right there um zeke. in the corner he is like 25 percent of this new project he's an amazing guitarist um and i think the idea that you know i really try to go by and the philosophy isn't just telling people to be independent but you know also as we mentioned today on this um platform 
you know, showing United Masters, you know, talking about United Masters in terms of distribution in order to own your masters, talking about TuneCore, talking about STEM, talking about ways that, you know, people that are on the other side of, you know, this microphone can be like, okay, I'm going to get on TuneCore right now and I'm going to upload my music. Okay, Taylor was clearly outside hustling, trying to figure out any and whatever way he could talk to Sway. You know, I have similar stories with other people too that not just do, you know, uh, radio, but also public relations of just like, yeah, I remember this kid, Taylor, he was just texting my phone 24-7. I gave this kid my number. I don't know how he got my number. He was sending me tracks. He was doing all this. And I think that it's that hard work. But then it's also um, to give a little bit more of the background, too, it's doing your own shows. So me and Chance, we threw our own shows. We didn't have a booking agent in Chicago. We went to all the venues personally and sat down with a lot of the folks. And I'm not going to lie, at that point in time, there were no Chicago artists that were, you know, really... Um, hip hop artists that were local doing shows. So a lot of these venues were like, no, nah, we don't want that because we know what that is. Like we see Chief Keef, we see King Louie, we see Lil Durk, like we know what y'all about. And even though that's not what we represented, that was kind of the backlash that we got. Eventually we got to find a place, shout out to Brendan, it's called Reggie's Rock Club on 22nd and State. Um, it's a historical spot, you know, there's so many different artists, but still to this day, up and coming artists play that place. Um, sold out Reggie's, went to Lincoln Hall, shout out to Joe Shanahan, went to Metro, shout out to Joe Shanahan, um, and then use Kanye West's blueprint, which he kind of raps about on Big Brother that I talked about on this show before as well, where he says that he played the Metro and then he played SOBs. He had a packed out crowd. Um, and, you know, Jay-Z was playing Madison Square. He like, yeah, yeah, we're going to be there. But he ain't get the two tickets. Um, we followed that idea, came here, sold out SOBs, ended up being able to talk with getting a booking agent at that point and doing it on our own terms, which turned out to be Kara Lewis the famous Kara Lewis, uh -huh. um, you know, she was amazing in terms of assisting us with, like I said, getting me on that Tory tour, putting together my own tours, getting me spot dates. Now, you know, we're doing Wild and Out, we're doing Tonight Shows, we're doing Gov Ball, things like that every week. Um, J. Cole said to Lil Pump um, that, you know, he's going to make a lot of his money off of touring in the future, and that's true. Um, so, you know, touring is a very big aspect to fund everything that I do. Musically, owning your masters is also a really big thing to fund everything you do, but I think that's something for a little bit longer down the end of the road where you can sell your masters, when you can do syncs, when you have control of your publishing, your masters, your mechanicals, um, those kind of things that, you know, you really need. But I'm going to just be honest, you know, I'm from the hood. I'm from 79th. I didn't go to business school. I didn't go to college. I just got on Wikipedia. You know uh, what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, a youngin' yeah. with a dream that, you know, knows that what we're going through and what we're experiencing isn't the way that music should be sold isn't the way that as an artist it should be placed and then also i think having the understanding in the business realm that there is a correlation between music and business but they are not one of the same mm, taylor you know bennett heather he well heather been saying how long we've been on the air you've been telling people to own your masters own your publishing because right. y'all are and the write, geniuses yeah. and, and write it down because yeah. it's art we're artists yeah. and f f we just have this fascination with putting everything in the phones and the, they mean nothing you know yeah. just like that somebody can press a button and wipe your whole stuff away yes. write yes. your art down we're buying art from people we have no idea who they were yeah. and you see these Christie's and Sotheby's a million dollars for this too. we're those people 20-25 years from now right save your art and then I feel like you know um, shout out to De La Soul I'm gonna be playing Taste of Chicago and yeah. headlining with them Dope. Um, but I feel like with De La Soul like we're seeing a lot of that you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying and you know my question is really how often do we really let you know history repeat itself until we kind of hop in and say, say but at the same time as an independent artist I've realized that a lot of these artists don't have the ability to speak out on what they're doing mm -hmm. and what yeah. their deal is mm -hmm. and you know I think that you know we could look at like this video right here and we look at like they all good but you know they get out this rain and shit and it's like damn i don't got my check damn where's my car damn. damn like you know what i'm saying and the world that i live in as an artist like the question that you asked me seeing my master seeing mm -hmm. quarterly publishing checks seeing sag after performance publishing checks from late night shows and things like that there's no artists that see that they don't control that they don't see those books they never learn the process of how to do their own business and as an independent artist, that's something that I had to do. So mm -hmm. I feel like it is hard sometimes to even speak on something that you're not educated about. Like, mm -hmm. if you don't know, you know, everybody's just getting advanced in the beginning of the year. Everybody's getting a couple million dollars, you know. But Trace, you got a quick Great. question? Yeah, tell, I wanted to know, outside of your brother, who's also a peer in the music industry, what other Chicago artists have you really been um, rocking with as far as camaraderie goes? Um, yo, so shout out to Saba. 
He mm, came up here. Saba, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful Saba. Saba. Yeah, like shout Saba. out Saba, man. You know, um, shout out No Name Gypsy. Mm-hmm. Um, she just went crazy. She had a great set yesterday at Gov Ball. Shout out Smino. Um, he's doing his thing right now. Smino's um, dope. We have yeah. Smino up here. Up here. Right? Yeah, yeah y'all have Smino up here, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, shout out Raven Lene. I've been seeing her back to back shows. She's Raven, doing her she's thing, yo. Dope. Y'all need to yeah. check her out. Um, shout out my boy Fem Dot that showed up on my project. Um, I had to, you know, th- there's certain things, you know, about being you know, um, being an artist and, you know, growing that is dope. That's not just, you know, all the perks of like we were talking, you know, money and whatever. And one of the cool things is, you know, being able to put your listeners or put an artist that you really think deserves to be in front of that spotlight there. And I think that was Femdot. Like everything that he's been doing in Chicago, he's had a bunch of different sold out shows. Uh-huh. He just won the uh, AT&T United Masters like wow. thing for like 25 racks and like whatever else it was. But he's just doing so much really dope work. And it was so cool for me to be able to work with him so shout out to fem dot um shout out to Superboy of course he's been um doing his thing for a long time uh he just put out a new project that i think had chance on it and then he was also just featured on one of chance's old joints so um while i can so shout out to super doing his thing um you know of course shout out to lil dirk you know shout out to king von um if you don't mind i want to talk about some people that aren't from chicago too that i've been listening to Mm -hmm. shout out to lil got it shout out to lil key um in atlanta yo um you know big slat they they're doing their thing yo um very 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 something that i really love about atlanta is that you know there is definitely like this vibe of support Mm -hmm. there is definitely in the music industry and it's a beautiful thing to see you know like coming from chicago where you know we definitely love each other but you know with all the stuff that kind of goes on in the streets there's a lot of people you will never see in the same room yeah um but you know in atlanta i I really love that camaraderie you even see you know a lot of different people that are from chicago making a lot of trips down there you know dirk her me chance you know because that community is down there um but then also, you know, I think, um, who else did I want to shout out? I'm sorry. Well, well but before, because of time about to run out, you're going to oh, yeah. do, okay. Um, yeah, let me but sh- shout them out in this freestyle you're going to do. And see. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. All right. I've, Yo, I brought my This brethren. is cool as hell. Thank you, uh, so That's what we do, man. Come on. 8, 8, 7, then, 4, uh, 2, 3, 3, 3 4, 5. We live. We live. Uh, and then Kendall right over here. This is a brother I met. Um, just hanging up. Step up to the mic. Yeah, step to the mic. Yeah. Hey, and, What's and, up, my man? Give everybody love. And I was, um, Heather, you know, early on the weekends when I'm in town, I like to walk down the riverside. Absolutely. Sit on a bench. Right. Early, like 7.30 a.m. Right. The Take sun was in. out. Take it in. I'm mm-hmm. staring out at the water. I'm right. staring out at Hudson the trees. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what I do. I'm dolo. You know, and, and uh, I'm sitting <laughs> I'm there. I'm dolo. And, and <laughs> my, my, my family over here, he was walking by and. I liked his swagger. He had a cup of coffee in his hand, and he was just listening, you know, just walking by himself, dolo. Okay. The same way, and he came by and said hello. We ended up talking. We ended up hanging out. How how long did we hang out? We we were down there for a couple hours, man. It was uh, okay. The the energy was just amazing. The vibe. So we clicked right off the bat, and then we we ended up talking everything from politics to religion to war. Yeah, Yeah, you're getting them conversations with swag. Yeah, it was it was amazing. It was amazing, and then found out he's been he served our country for years. Thank Uh, you. I won't go Thank too you. much. Can I? How much? Appreciate can I? you. He right. went over. Yo, yo, yo. He was deployed overseas. He was. He was in Saddam Hussein's house. Woo. Yeah. Um. He was the one that captured his brother. Thank the, you. The, the, the gentleman who gave up Saddam. My my squad was responsible for catching him. Fauzi Al Rashid. Mm-hmm. Back in the, the invasion of Iraq, so that was a, a proud moment in my life. Wow. And how many proud times were you? He was in Afghanistan. Yeah, I've, I've been for quite a few times for quite a number of years. Yeah. So I've I've been to probably every hot zone we've had in a, a, quite a few years actually. So yeah, and uh, Iraq, Haiti, Kosovo, and I, and, yeah. I, and I asked him how you know it's real, and then the hot zone, right? Hot zone. Yeah. 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 He was in the hot zone. The foot boots on the ground, like right, right. you know, um, life in danger every God moment bless. of the day. And one of the things I asked him is how is he coping. You know, because you cannot go from living that in that in the hot zone and transition back to civilian life right. without right. needing help. And we talked about the stigma that comes with PTSD, why a lot of people who serve don't want to claim it because right. once they put that on your records, it's hard to get a job. I think that's getting better it's, now. It's, it's a difficult uh, uh, transition going yeah. from from there back to stateside living. Yeah. Because the, the things that affect you while you're in theater uh-huh. and you come home, is it's, it's hard to flip that switch e- yeah. even my girlfriend she has to deal with it a lot we talked about that we as talk well. about, she's there Shamika. <clears throat> 
Shamika. Hello. Hi. How, you how are y'all? Strong Welcome sister right here. Welcome to the patience. show. Patience. Thank, Thank you for your patience. We oh, even okay. saw watching people play basketball, and he was like, "Swear, I got to cut out." I figured he might have been replaying something in his head. <laughs> no, I didn't want him to go, him go off. On him, you know what I mean? <laughs> But yeah. um, I appreciate y'all. So I invited them down. Nice. And we're going to do a quick, Lord Sears up next, but if we could do a, a, a quick something, man. Let's Zeke. do it. Zeke, tell them who you are, man. Come here, man. Yeah, Zeke. Yeah. Tell, tell, tell them who you are. Who are you? Uh, I'm Zeke Lakai. I'm, I'm an artist. I'm a guitarist. Um, that's, that's, really that's, really that's really, he said, that's about it. Where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Chicago. What part of Chicago? West Side, Chicago. West Side. Okay, yeah. you gonna you, you, you gonna play some? You gonna do some? Over? Yeah, let's do it. He okay. played all the strings on the project, so we should be good. Okay, I'm gonna <laughs> dedicate this to you, Kendall. Thank you, bro. Good to meet you. Thank you for your service oh, yeah. and all those who served this country. This Absolutely. is for you, Thank Jamaica. You. Thank, Thank you, man. For your your patience and your resilience. For all those who stand by our servicemen, yes. yeah. you know, and I know it's difficult. I come from a family of people who's um, been in the service, so. We appreciate you as well, okay? Thank All right, and here it is. We want to thank Wanda Sykes for coming by this Wanda, morning. We Shout out, jam Wanda session Sykes. today, Sway. Oh, that's yeah. crazy. Iyanla Van Zant for oh, coming Yana by. Oh, Van Zant. Get them tour tickets. Okay, get them tour tickets. Taylor Bennett, get the yeah, American yo. Reject Project, and we're going to end now. like this. All right.